Um, I want to talk about something you bring up in the section entitled Unhealed Wounds, where you talk about this guy that you dated named Guy. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and you talk about how he exploited your insecurities. Um, mm -hmm. I, I love this line that you have. You say, uh, not everyone in our lives is on divine assignment. Some people come to slay your spirit. And I have mm -hmm. to say that when I read that, I was like, whoo, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it, it took me, it took me back a bit. Um, yeah. So my question for you is, I guess, what advice can you give, especially to young women who, who may not be, who may be oblivious to the signs, who may, may not be able to tell what those signs are when they're entering into a relationship or a situation where their partner is essentially um, feeding off of, you know, in a sort of parasitic way, as opposed to relationship and in that relational giving and receiving, giving and receiving. Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that was one of the um, the essays that I I really needed to take my time with because mm -hmm. I think sometimes we experience tough um tough parts of our journey like this one mm -hmm. and that re this relationship and we outgrow them mm -hmm. to the point or we move on like I was talking about earlier we move on so fast and you're like I'm not affected who's affected I'm not affected <laughs> not me <laughs> it would be weak to be affected right you know? it would be a sign of weakness right right yeah and so in that sense you know skipping over the actual processing and healing of it and now you know that feels several lives ago mm -hmm. um I've disassociated from the girl, you know, I was between, how old was I? Between 22 and 27 in that relationship. Mm -hmm. It feels so long ago. And the work it took to actually like, okay, put myself back in your old shoes and <laughs> yeah. walk yourself through the process of what flags did you see that you ignored? Mm -hmm. What didn't you see because of your naivete or your your desire to feel loved and to feel a home in someone else. Mm -hmm. um, what were you chasing? What were you resisting? All of those questions, I think, um, deserve to be top of mind, not just in retrospect, but in the moment. It's obviously hard to do as a young girl. You only know what you know, and you're impressionable, and you want so bad to feel loved. And to, you've almost written your love story before you've walked it. Yeah. Um, and so <laughs> that's an issue I find in, in that itself. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. so I think, you know, the biggest question I'd probably ask my then self and then now um, other younger women is what are you holding back? Cause I mm -hmm. find that usually when we're in relationship romantic or otherwise with overly dominant characters, mm -hmm. um, there is something that's top of mind that we're not saying or, or top of heart that we're not saying, we're, we're holding it back either because we don't want to ruffle feathers. Yeah. We don't yeah. want to put the truth out there because then we might have to actually deal with it. Yeah. We actually, it's a, it then becomes a reality that yeah. we can't undo or unsee or un, um, unknow. And so I think if we're being really honest with ourselves in the moment, in relationships that aren't aligned or on divine assignment, mm -hmm. um, we have to be honest about what is at the tip of our tongue or what is top of mind that we're not actually letting out on the table. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would guess that either it's a hesitancy or a fear or something that is minimizing your voice, not just what aren't you saying, but why aren't you saying it? Mm -hmm. um, and that is an indicator that it's not truly a safe space where you can sink into, where you can be your authentic self. And how could you live at your highest vibration if you're if you're 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 not provided the environment 
um, within relationships to be all that you are and all that is um, and share all that that is on your heart or on your mind. And so I think in dynamics like the one I described in this essay, Unhealed Wounds, um, I would argue that most of us women who enter into them have something that we're holding back in saying or expressing mm -hmm. and asking yourselves, what is that thing? Because sometimes we don't always know. We just know it's it's an itch that we're like, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, and then why? Why are you holding it back? It's interesting. I find that there's this... Um... There, there's this relationship between, you know, uh, wanting to belong, right? Wanting to belong to a relationship or, or group um, or collective of some sort and wanting to express yourself, your individuality. And there's always this tension between those two things. But I do wonder within the context of a romantic relationship, and I've certainly had this experience um, and I wonder if this is uh, more pronounced with women, is because we are such relational beings and because we thrive off of this feeling of, of relatedness, we can sometimes compromise on our own individuality. And we can be so afraid of being alone, right? That we will compromise and put mm -hmm. up with a number of things just so we can stay in, um, I won't call it a relationship because I, I think that, that that word has weight and has to mean something specific, but just so that we can be tethered to someone else. Mm -hmm. And I was reading this book um, called The Way of Woman, which is a beautiful book, I highly recommend mm -hmm. it. Um, the Way of Woman by Helen Luke. And she talks about how, um, she talks about the role of sacrifice in becoming your true self and you you have to always sacrifice the thing that means the most to you and she talked about one of the challenges and the quests so to speak that women must encounter is their willingness to sacrifice being with someone else their willingness to be alone right mm -hmm. um in order to actually operate on that higher frequency and in operating on that higher frequency, inadvertently or uh, counterintuitive, be able to actually attract someone mm -hmm. who's also mm -hmm. on that frequency, right. right? But the willingness to be alone and the willingness to give up, you know, being with someone if that person is not the, the appropriate person is something that's really, that has to be learned. It's like a conclusion one has to arrive at. It's also very difficult difficult to arrive at that to it arrive is. at that realization yeah no I I agree I think I've um experienced both mm -hmm. <laughs> um you know just that it's kind of an arc I think of um when I think about even my romantic um life um and for sure I think the theme of my younger you know part of my life mm -hmm. um Certainly, you know, after leaving um, Niger, or West Africa, where I spent most of my formative years um, between, I, I came back to the States at, at 14 years old. And mm -hmm. between then and literally, you know, mother, when I became a mother, motherhood, yeah. I felt like I was in that, that stage of wanting like deep desire and fulfilling or deep desire for belonging mm -hmm. and filling it um with relationships mm -hmm. some that were meaningful some that were not but that yeah. that void was filled um and it it that that desire for belonging definitely led me into um in into relationships that you know are, are no longer existing, <laughs> yeah. um, but, um, and then it was really in, you know, there was a, a good few years where I sunk into that singledom, which was like the, the most thriving I have been spiritually, um, mentally, emotionally. Um, it's the season where this book was birthed out of, um, and so I, I definitely think that 
um, to get to that place though, where I welcome um, solitude and um, all of it, the ways in which it, it contributes to my wholesomeness, I think to get to that point I needed, and I think that this is also just, you know, whether it's teenage years or, or, or young adulthood, we kind of have to learn the hard way. You know, we could, we could tell um, young women um, all about, um, you know, the importance of, of being in solitude, but I think it takes being tired and being worn down sometimes, um, being exhausted by, um, by a, a track record of cycles um, that really sometimes aren't as progressive as um, we can be when we're alone. And so however long that takes you, I think that once you get to that place of um, really appreciating the solitude, Mm. Um, you're able to create the like rich soil that you need to then plant new things, Mm. you know, new new relationships based um, not on trauma informed kind of past, but on possibility and light. And um, you're, you're in a place where the two of you can almost educate each other along the way versus, um, you know, a a codependent depleted um, state, which is, why I titled that one essay Unhealed Wounds. It's when two people who are who are wounded come together and trying to look to each other to heal their wounds when really the the moral <laughs> of that story, yeah. Um, yeah. the moral of that story was um, to really invest in our own um, healing of our own wounds before we um, create codependent based relationships. Mm-hmm.